Razabani for IFO TV in association with MTK Global. With me on Zoom today on a very special day, my man, the knowledge himself, Mr. Spencer Ferron. Spencer, firstly, how are we doing? How's the detox? Really good. As you, you know what? After me speaking about the detox, so many people inbox me to say, ah, oh, um, like, could you give us what you were on? So <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, more than anything, we're on life. And like I said, last time out, waking up is such an underrated blessing. So if you've woken up today, you've got health and strength, you've got a roof over your head, food in the fridge. You know what I mean? Don't just count your blessings, but live them. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, Spence, today's a, a quite an important day. Today is 50 years since the fight of the century between one of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali uh, and Joe Frazier. And obviously, I spoke to you earlier today and I was like, we need to speak about this because there wasn't a lot of um, discussion, interviews, media about this event. And which Sorry, my bit, this, disgracefully, there wasn't a lot. About this particular event that took place uh, 50 years ago. And I thought there's no one better to shed some light on such a topic than someone like yourself. Um, what are your, obviously you were young, I wasn't even born. What are your early kind of memories? Well, I was, I was a boy. Okay, my bad. <laughs> my, my, the fight was actually, but um, loads of guys will tell you, I speak about this so vehemently that, you know what I mean? Maybe I was I was there in another life. We don't know. You know what I mean? Um, it was a um, absolutely fantastic fight. You know, it was. Not for the fact, what that fight represented at that time was... You know, we, we, we go through certain genres where we get that immense change in, in history. Um, and I think crazy, like, Joel Frazier was, 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 was chosen to be the, the flag bearer for the, because the Vietnam War was on at that time. And if, we, if young guys know that Ali famously refused, to go to the Vietnam War. At that time, he was under the tutelage of um, Elijah Muhammad of the Nation of Islam, and Ali refused to go to war. Um, he famously said that no Viet Cong never called me no N-word. Now, if we flip the page, forget about the fight which happened uh, uh, March 8th, 1971 in Madison Square Gardens which had everybody there. When I mean everybody, everybody there. Now imagine Frank Sinatra is the biggest guy, you know what I mean? And in order for Frank Sinatra to get a ticket to the fight, he had to become a photographer for Life magazine, which a famous article was written about the fight by Norman Mailer, who was an incredible um, writer and historian, right? So that's how big the fight was. Everybody was there. Burt Lancaster was there. They made a documentary on the fight called The Fight. And Burt Lancaster was being under the tutelage of the then one of the greatest fighters of all time in Archie Moore, Aegis Archie Moore, the former light heavyweight champion of the world. <sighs> what can you say about that fight? You'd have to turn around. If you just look on that and say, like, if you was to enroll the, the last biggest heavyweight fights that we were having, and potentially the one that's coming up with Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury, yeah? Roll them all up into one. Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayover, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, which one of the biggest, right? Um, Mike Tyson, Michael Spinks. Roll them fights all up together. Then you'd have to times it by 10 to realize just how big Ali versus um, Joe Frazier was. Because when Ali refused to take the, to, to take the draft, um, at that time, when Ali won the World Heavyweight Championship, this is the madness of it. Legislation only changed in America in 1968 with Lyndon Johnson that black people in America are allowed to vote. Are you imagining, are you just working that one out? 
So if you used to go back some 340, uh, uh, 47 years, that like in mass, black people were in America in mass from the slave trade because it was 1619 when the first major black people were already in America. But you think about it. So all that time, they've been in the, some 350 years they've been in America, but they were not allowed to vote. Ali was heavyweight champion of the world. He wasn't allowed to vote. Do you understand? So obviously, anybody with real sense would say then, if I'm being oppressed and opposed by then obviously I don't want no part of that which is the system, right? That's what Ali stood for. Now, Joe Frazier, if you were to think about it, Joe Frazier was, he, he, I mean, he, he, he worked as a sharecropper as a young kid. Do you know what I mean? Gave up schooling when he was about eight years old, right? Different breed of a human being here. Joe Frazier was the Joe Frazier was the man that would be seen more to be like for you know representing the downtrodden of black people of that time, right? Because you got to think about it. Ali, and you could see by his 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 his, his, his name was Cassius Clay. He, he was named after uh, a a. The, before the civil rights, but a liberationist called Cassius Clay, that's who he was named after. His dad was named after him and he was named after him, who was a white man. Did you get me? So if you look at what Joe Frazier, Joe Frazier was kind of more so, but because of the fact that Joe Frazier was the person who was, he, he was, he was seemingly pro Vietnam War. So the people who are the old vets in America, they latched onto Joe Frazier like, you are our saving grace because this guy, that we were, he already got stripped of his title, got stripped of his title. In 1976, he got stripped of his title. When Ali got stripped of his title, he was still remained as the lineal heavyweight champion by, by many. Ring Magazine still had him as lineal heavyweight champion, even though they had a tournament which started off in, what, um, in 68 which Joe Frazier won eventually. Like he won the New York State Athletic version of the heavyweight title by beating Buster Mathis. Then um, went on, went on. It, 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 finally, then he beat uh, Jimmy Ellis, who was Ali's old sparring partner. He beat Jimmy Ellis for the unified heavyweight championship of the world, the WBC and WBA and, and uh, New York State Athletic heavyweight championship. So Joe Frazier was seen as, as the paper champion but we had, think we had states like the British Border Control, right? Uh, the Australian and New Zealand um, Boxing Board, they all refused to recognize all the other champions and they still had Ali as a heavyweight champion. So Ali at the time, was he 30, 31, 31 and all, with 25 knockouts or 26 knockouts. I'm going off my head now, right? Joe Frazier was 26 and all with 23 knockouts. So it was a massive, massive fight. So what Ali represented at that time made the fight so big. Made the fight, even like, if you think about it, someone's been out of fighting for like three years and when he makes his comeback, he fights two top contenders, one in Jimmy Ellis, who, sorry, Jimmy Ellis, one in Jerry Quarry, right? And then he knocks out Oscar Bonavina who gave Joe Frazier kittens in their first fight. He knocked down Joe Frazier, but Joe Frazier still beat him. So this was just how big this fight was. It was so big because Ali was real pop culture. At the time there, you, um, at the time there, you see, like you could have dropped Ali anywhere in the world in a parachute and he'd be recognized because he was the most recognizable face on the planet. So do you understand? There ain't no one big like Ali. And not only that, but Ali was so prepared to stand for the cause. Because if you notice that anybody, if you speak out against any form of oppression, right? What happens is the trick of, the trick is to blame you for complaining about oppression. If you complain about something, then you're the one with a chip on the shoulder. 
This is what happens. So what Ali represented was something, was something big and something that I've realized that even though there's loads of people that get in dead to Ali, but I'm saying if you are consciously conscious, your consciousness brings you on the same frequency level of a Muhammad Ali. And if you stand for something, which he did stand for something, because you got to ask yourself, who would have given up a title, right? When he's making millions, Ali was the one that brought millions into the sport, right? To give that all up, to say, right, I'm going to give that all up. I'm even facing going to jail for the love of my people. Name me one man today that would do that. Just one. And that is the reverence of respect that we have to have when we mention Ali's name. But then in the same thing, we got to say this, Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier is a true success story. A true success story that a man that came from adverse poverty. And it was adverse poverty. To being heavyweight champion of the world at the time when it was more poignant to be heavyweight champion. I'm not saying it don't mean nothing today, it does. But it was more poignant then. Reason why? Because we never had multiple titles. Reason why we didn't have four guys all claiming to be world heavyweight champion and then we're whittling it down. No, Joe Frazier was the guy. Joe Frazier was the man that, um, in 1964, he won, the he won the heavyweight gold medal. Joe Frazier was the guy. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And that fight was incredible. And it's like I watched little snippets of it. I just shared it on my Instagram earlier today. And when I was watching it, it made me realize just how great Ali was. Even though he loses the fight. And people don't seem to... to it's like, in that fight, the loser won and the winner lost. Think about it. Joe Frazier beat Ali. Knocked him down in the 15th round with a left hook. Ali was always susceptible to left hooks. Uh, um, Sonny Banks, the first guy to throw him. And, and also um, Henry Cooper. What was that? Thing? That was June of 63. Henry Cooper knocked him down with the Emery Ammar. Hits him with the left hook. Knocks him down. Ali was always susceptible to left hooks. That, that particular left hook that Joe Frazier landed in the 15th round, that, if that was a few years earlier, Ali would have used his reflexes to move away from that from that punch. And I know there's there's literature that Ali said he saw the punch coming. He could see it coming, but he just couldn't get himself out of the way. Uh, yeah, but regardless of that, regardless of that, they did a favor to box him by taking away Ali's title unjustly. They did a favor to box him. Because a young Ali would have handily beat a Joe Frazier. I'm telling you this now. I'm just being real. He'd have beaten Joe Frazier. He'd been too fast. He'd have hit, run around there. You know what I mean? He'd have beat Joe Frazier. He'd have beaten an up-and-coming Ken Norton. He'd have beaten, easily beaten uh, 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 a Ken Norton. Ken, sorry, uh, George Foreman. My God, my head. He would have beaten those guys quite easily. Because what happened was the hiatus of the time when he was out of the sport and then when he came back to the sport, something was missing. Ali didn't even look the same. So we have two versions of Ali. We had this young Cassius Clay, the Louisville lip running around and all the rest of it. Then we had the, the, the older version of Ali that had to adapt his style of boxing. He had to change up his style of boxing. It was more like he'd throw fast shots, then he'd wait a bit. It, would, it wouldn't be so much on his toes. He'd have to exalt punishment from fighters and then come back at them. Sometimes it worked. 95% of the times it did work. Or the times when it never worked, it just really did not work. The, 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 the US Senate that, that forbade Ali from continuing fighting at the time when he refused to set the stand actually saved boxing because this man became one of the most loved icons in sporting history. Right? But I want people to realize this. Regardless of everything, the super fight, he lost. <laughs> right? He got beat. But if you go and watch that fight, and when you watch that fight, you see Ali do some incredible things. 
like how he throws the jab. I know what hard jabs as well. How he throws out his jab for a heavyweight to do that. That time he was 215 pounds. Uh, Joe Frazier was 205. Bruv. You, when, you watch, when you watch those two guys there, you're actually looking at boxing gods. And that's what you're looking at. And the fight was humongous. Uh, within Leicester Square, they had something like 60,000 people crammed to go and watch that fight. Can you imagine that? It's 1971, my friend. Right? So we have to truly honor those men. Because what I realize is like, we're living in a, in a, in a society now, right? That it's, it's the culture to disrespect the culture, right? Or we're living in a, in a culture now where we don't want to honor the men that paved the way before you. Not realizing that when you honor those men and you give, but by your, by your speaking alone gives it energy, it makes those guys remember, but it also raises you as well because you are remembering these greats. And now even more so, because they both passed away, that we are remembering our ancestors. We're remembering the men that paved the way for people to, 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 to remember what greatness really is. And when we speak of iconic figures, Ali needed, I mean, the, what's it, the antithesis of himself was Joe Frazier, because Joe Frazier wasn't the flash, loud, gregarious kind of person. Ali was, Frazier was a total opposite. Ali was known as a puncher. Frazier could punch, he could really punch. Especially when he went down with that left hook and went downstairs with you on that left hook as well. Frazier could really, really punch. That's what makes that fight so amazingly great. And I'll say to any young person, just go and watch that fight. Right, go and watch, and there's a couple revitalized versions of it now on YouTube where it's more color focused and all the rest of it. You go watch that fight, and you go watch the, the, the subtle head movement of Joe Frazier, and Ali still be able to pick him with that jab, but Joe Frazier still riding, riding the shots, riding the shots, and waiting. And in the 15th round, when he leashes that left hook, he kind of dummies the first one, and then he throws it, and he catches Ali and knocks him down. But to Ali's credit, he was down for a few seconds. Right, for a few seconds. And a lot of people don't realize, Joe Frazier was in the hospital for four weeks after that, you know that? Right? And there was a time in the fight with Joe Frazier, I remember I've got, I've got loads of fight footage. And I've got to big up this guy, a guy called uh, Robin Jones. When I was 15 years old, I was working at a boxing monthly. So Robin, if you're watching this, I'll just big you up. So he, at the time, he had the biggest fight collection in Europe. I'm 15 years old. This guy used to power me with so many different videotapes, which I'll go home and study. I'm 15. So that's what, 31, 31 years now? 35, was it? Yeah, yeah, 31 years. Mad, right? And, and I would I would be watching, I'll be watching like the, the interviews after, because I like to watch the interviews after. And and like Joe Frazier says it, it's like there's towers in the fight, and Ali was throwing the shots like. Don't you know I'm God? And, and Joe Fisher, uh, I got out of the way of some of those punches. I said, well, God, you're going to get whooped tonight. And that was right. Yeah, man. Spence, we had, yeah, I, I, think, I think the UK, um, it was close to about 30 million people tuned in on BBC to watch that fight. And it was famous in them that was, that was half of the, of the UK's population. Now, we live in a society now where we're promoted by, you know, anyone can promote themselves, Instagram, Twitter. We have these powerful tools. Had that fight taken in a society with those social media platforms? The world would have stopped. The world would have stopped. I'm just going to be real with you. The world would have stopped. And the reason being is because both men had a cause. Both men had a cause. And, and like I said, unfortunately... Joe Frazier was seen as, as, as this Uncle Tom, which he wasn't, right? But he was seen as his Uncle Tom. He was seen as his Uncle Tom because Ali was, was, was so vehemently opposed to the system. 
So it doesn't matter if you could be opposed to the system yourself, but you've got someone who's, who's uber opposing the system, like how Ali was, then your, 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 your stance of the resistance isn't going to look too tough. And, and, and that's what it was when it came to when you, when you look at that or the magnetism that the, the two of them needed each other. And it was the fact that it drew those numbers then. What would it have drawn today? How much would they have earned today? I think they, 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 they both split um, $5 million back then. Right? Crazy. Ali broke all records. Spence, do you get disrespected when some people within boxing look at today's day and age and look at certain fights and then say, this fight could potentially be the biggest ever or the biggest in the last 100 years? Do you get, do you get disrespect? Do you find that, no. do you find that as ignorant? You know, you know what? You know what? I don't, because what, how it is, is this, uh, um, Raz? I realise that not a lot of people know boxing. And that's that. They don't. I'm not boasting that I know boxing. Go talk to the people that they regard as people in the industry. Not talk about the little idiot YouTubers. Go talk to people in the industry. And ask if I don't know this game. Study this game. Right? So, no, I don't I don't get angered. Before I used to get angry, it's like, it's your opinion. You're allowed to have your opinion. And to just add there, just because a fight makes several hundred million, it doesn't mean that it was bigger. It wasn't bigger. From an audience perspective, then it, it just it just it just wasn't bigger, right? Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayer weren't bigger than Ali Frazier. Still, you don't believe me? Go go interview Bob Arum. I know you got his number. Go interview Bob Arum and ask him. Ask him. And he's still around today. We should cherish Bob while he's here. I'm being real. Go and ask these guys. What, 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 what fight was bigger? Nobody grew crap. Nobody drew crowds like Ali. Nobody, right? That's it. You know, if you stand up for something, like how vehemently opposed Ali was to the Vietnam War, right? At that time, then you had the movement. You had the hippie movement then, right? You had the Black Panther movement then, who were aligned with the hippies as well, right? We had very, very big, poignant. Uh, 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 movements going on which were seen as the resistance which are now encapsulated in history and Ali's a part of that you know what I mean? Frazier's a part of that now whatever side that you're on certain times you want to turn around and say we well, don't want to be on the wrong side of history don't want to be on the wrong side of history it's amazing that Ali stood for something and it was demonly seen like he was on the wrong side of history right? how wrong they were Reason why, because when Ali says, like, I worship God, I worship Allah, I don't worship no English clothes designer, I don't worship no money, I don't worship no... When a guy turns around and says that, then you have to know. Mike Tyson says it the best. Mike Tyson says, like, a lot of guys would say, yeah, I'll die for this thing, I'll die for this thing. But they really wouldn't. But if you look on Ali, you know he would have died for his beliefs. Right? His religious beliefs... His physical convictions to boxing, he would have died for that. Ali's the greatest of all time. I'm telling you that now, as a heavyweight, the greatest of all time. And I, and I echo those words. I, I remember speaking to Mike Tyson once upon a time in America, and I was speaking to him about Ali, and he said, the only thing I'm going to say is Ali was the greatest, but I was the baddest. I wasn't on his realm. I wasn't on his level. I was the baddest without doubt, but he was the greatest. All right. And when you hear that, you just got to say Alhamdulillah. Spencer, it was also the first time, I think, in the heavyweight division where you had two undefeated fighters at the time as well, wasn't it? First time. First, first, time, first time in the heavyweight division, two undefeated uh, fighters got themselves in the ring for, for both the time. Now, let's look at, at the end of the fight. Obviously, Ali loses the fight. He gets knocked down. I think all three judges had it unanimously in Joe Fraser's. It was unanimous, but listen, some of the judges was ridiculous. I mean, it was a close fight. Go watch the fight. One judge gave um, 11 rounds, 11 rounds to four to Frazier. That's ridiculous. I'm just being wrong. Anyway. What do you make, do you make of Ali's reaction after that? Because it seemed like at, at, at sometimes in some interviews, he kind of 
didn't accept defeat. He said he didn't lose the fight. It was a close fight. I'm going to be real. But Ali wasn't just fighting Joe Frazier in there. But to be fair, and I'm going to be fair, um, similarly to Sugar Ray Leonard in um, June of 1980, when he fights Roberto Duran in Montreal, which Bob Arum and Don King both promoted themselves together. Len, I love Leonard, but Len lost that fight. I'm going to be real. And it went on not now. It was a close fight, but Leonard lost the fight. But Leonard will never admit to you that he lost that first fight. So it's kind of like the same with Ali. Ali said, nah, it was a conspiracy because they knew. And I, I get where he was coming from at that time because the judges had it wide. You know what I mean? They, 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 the judges had the scoring wide. Uh, very wide. I'm saying, okay, I get it with a knockdown, but that was very, very wide. 11 rounds to four? One judge had it? Come on, man. So for that, then I get it. Because you think, well, all right, if I'd have lost, put it a bit closer than that. But regardless, you, you, did, you lost the fight. Spence, we're, we're 50 years on. What, could, what can we take from it now? I know we live in this materialistic world of social media and people post things and we believe things and we, we read things that are not beneficial to us. But what is the core message? What can we learn from such a magnitude of an event, a history of boxing that took place 50 years ago and a name that we still remember to this day and we say he was the greatest of all time? Um, I think if we was to take away anything from is this, is like, it's not the battles that you win in the ring or in the boardroom or at work or politically, it is the battles that you win in life. And I believe that at the time when Ali passed away, he passed away at peace. So if I could take away anything from that, it's like, as the great Les Brown says, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Isn't of interest that Ali, three years after losing to Joe Frazier, then beat him in a return, then losing to Kendall, then beat him in a return, fights George Foreman, who was the Sonny Liston of his time, who was the Mike Tyson of his time, and beats him to become world heavyweight champion again. To me, it's, it shows more to the fact of it's not about getting belts around your waist, but being victorious in life. And I believe, even though Ali was stricken with Parkinson's, that he was actually at peace with himself. And he became one of the most beloved human beings on the planet, right? But at a time, if you flip the page, 30 years or 40 years prior, he was one of the most hated men on the planet when he refused to take the draft. So if I take anything from that fight, what that fight meant was, it doesn't mean nothing if the whole world is for you, but God's against you. And what have you benefited? What have you benefited? Nothing. But you think about what you've gained if God loves you, and the whole world can hate you. So it doesn't matter about who wants to hate on you, who wants to say whatever, stand true to your beliefs and be consistent. And I believe Ali was consistent with his beliefs, right? It was consistent, he was fallible as a human being, but it was consistent to his beliefs. And because of his consistency, the reason why we still call his name today, and the reason why in, in, in 50 years from now, we'll still call his name, and in 100 years from now, we'll still call his name. Because of what that man did, and how we brought records and how we change the the perception of of many people and more so the fact that he was anti-establishment in his young years and as you got older you know they say when you're young it's for the fight and when you're older it's for the council and that's it that's what i could say okay spence i know we can go on and speak about Ali uh, and his fights and, and what he did for society, community and for mankind uh, in a lot of detail. But I know I did promise I'm going to get this out tonight as soon as possible. Thank you very much. So I really just, appreciate you shedding. Uh, we, just got remember, we just got to remember that fight and it's 50 years and it was the fight of the century 
and it should be given the credit that it deserves. Spencer Ferron, IFL TV, thank you very much.